the City of San Antonio Planning Department. Um, this is the eighth meeting of the Midtown Planning Team. Um, so I'd like to welcome uh, everyone else from the public who joined us tonight. This is a good opportunity to um, hear the discussion that goes on here and um, reflect on what we're doing and, um, and be ready to provide some more input to us uh, in other venues when we come to visit neighborhood association meetings and when we have opportunities online to comment and the like. Um, so we're going to do a round of introductions um, in just a second for the planning team so that everyone is reminded of who each other is and so that the public can, can hear that. But first, I wanted to pass on a message from another city department that every year um, issues a survey to inform the citywide budget. And it's called Essay Speak Up, and it's an opportunity to provide um, your input into the citywide budget. Um, there's a web page, essayspeakup.com, pretty easy to remember, that you can take back and share with other neighborhood residents. Um, and uh, the brief survey asks whether you think funding levels should be increased, uh, decreased, or maintained for several different city priorities. Um, there's currently a lack of response from District 1 and 2, and Midtown is in District 1 and 2, and so that's why they asked us to try to make an announcement tonight. Uh, the results of the survey will be shared with City Council uh, for a day-long budget work session on May 30th. Um, the survey closes on May 12th, so please remember, essayspeakup.com, there's written surveys you can also fill out on the table outside, and leave with us on this table before you leave tonight. And I'll return those to the, uh, to the department that's issued in the survey. Okay. So, uh, for tonight's meeting, we're going to uh, talk about the Midtown planning process and give you an update on where we are in the process for making the Midtown plan. Can you introduce uh, the structure of the web page where the Midtown plan will lie? Um, we're going to talk about a section of the plan called Neighborhood Profiles and Priorities. And um, we're going to have some, uh, some discussion about that and some ideas from uh, Mankey Park Representative Butch Hayes. Um, and we're also going to have a continued discussion from the last two meetings about the future land use map and some urban design recommendations for Broadway. So before we dive into all of that, um, could you please start us off, Abe, with Introducing yourself. Sure. Abe Wise, uh, representing Five Points Neighborhood. Jeanette Harmon, representing Half March. <coughs> Richard Fudias, representing San Antonio College. I'm Mike Austin, representing Jordan Hill. Uh, Colbert Lees, representing San Antonio River Gordon. Uh, Tim Bowler with the Metropolitan Transit. Gaciela Sanchez with the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center. Rich Hayes, Manning Park. Lou Fox, chair of the Midtown Action Committee. So again, I'm Garrett Phillips from the Planning Department. We also have um, Andrew Russ from our consultant MIG with us. Um, Mark Delatorre, also can you please stand for a quick thank you. Uh, uh, and a few other city staff, uh, and hopefully all we will we'll skip those introductions, but um, thanks for doing that. Can we also just, the same way, just everybody else that's from the community or organizations or whoever's here, just like to know. Yeah, yeah, please. Would you, would you like to start off? So, Bob, where are you going to go? Close to McCall and Beacon Hill, Tier 1 Neighborhood Coalition. Denise Hallmark, Government Hill, and newly elected president. Chrissy Kimmicky, City Council to Chicklin. I'm Steve Amberg, I live in Mankey Park. George Grimes, Mankey Park. Chuck Lynn Lucas with Nowcast SA, Henry Camrick. Joni Brooks, Mankey Park. I'm Polly Noel, and I'm the uh, president of the Making Park Neighborhood Association. Mary Evans, Mary Evans. Mm -hmm. Cindy Tower, Government and Home. Thank you. I'm going to make fun of the Okay. Thank you. Uh, I guess while we're at it, the rest of the staff will be here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Bonnie Hamilton, and I'm with the Planning Department. Susan Gwynn, City Attorney's Office of Bridget White Planning Department. Uh, Rudy Neal, uh, Planning Department. 
Hey, welcome. Hey. Thanks for coming. Um, there is an open seat over here. So, in terms of the overall planning process, um, we started last fall with analysis of vision last summer, really. We started to work on some of the big overall uh, ideas and concepts for the plan in the fall. Uh, created, started creating some maps about where uh, growth should be encouraged. Um, and left a lot of areas where growth should not be encouraged so much. Um, and then in the winter, we started working on uh, the future land use map and some of the other more specific recommendations for the Midtown Plan. And so we're still in this phase of trying to create and refine some of the more detailed strategies. And we're getting very close to um, being able to put a draft plan online that will um, certainly still be a work in progress and there'll be a lot of opportunity for people to weigh in um, by us going out to the community and by um, providing comments online. So um, after we release the draft plan, on the attack of pitch, um, and we have time to get some feedback as the final plan. There'll be a three month adoption process um, that includes presentations to uh, City Council and the Planning Commission, uh, and ultimately asking the City Council to adopt the plan. Um, so we're in the, certainly in the latter part of working on the plan, um, but we also still have plenty of work to do and there's plenty of opportunity to uh, affect the final outcome. Um, so recently, some public engagement we've done uh, was primarily oriented to neighborhood associations visiting each of the neighborhood association general meetings over the last couple of months uh, in Midtown to talk about the future land use map uh, and to talk about the neighborhood profiles and priorities, which we'll talk about a little bit more tonight as well. Um, and uh, in the next couple of months, as I said, the plan will be online. We'll be doing more neighborhood visits if you'll have us. Uh, we'll be doing other intercepts uh, around the community. And there will also be a larger community meeting that we'll host and invite people to come to us if, uh, if they are able to do that. So the Vinta plan webpage, uh, the, the plan will primarily be online. So um, it'll be the same webpage that we've had for some time, and it's midtown.sacomplan.com. And there'll be a series of tabs where one can find the draft plan. And there'll be some options to choose from where you can go to existing conditions for the vision and goals. Um, implementation strategies, and the like. Um, if you click on any one of those tabs, there'll be a page that has a lot more content where you can click on one of these, like land use, or housing, or economic development. And from there, there'll be lots of content that you can scroll down through and review what's in, what's in the plan. So that'll be the actual form of, of the plan. And there'll be opportunities to comment um, throughout, both in the maps uh, and on the text. By the way, Part of that uh, focus, are you looking at some of the deficiencies within the area also as far as uh, land rehabilitation, volume structures, and all that? that <coughs> so, um, in terms of uh, deteriorated uh, like residential and commercial buildings, um, you know, those the, the, in neighborhoods, we've heard typically that those are priorities for rehabilitation if possible, as opposed to replacing those buildings. Um, and um, in our areas, like a large mixed use corridor, if it doesn't have some essential historic character, though it's an opportunity for more people to use a new building, uh, is sort of the direction that we're headed in. But yeah. Um, What's the date? This will be the middle. I cannot uh, commit to a date okay. right now, um, but we're trying to get it done as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you'll definitely know because we will we will advertise it and email you and everything, okay. yeah, and ask you to start reviewing it. Mm -hmm. yes. 
Is there has anyone looked at the possibility of having it in Spanish as well and possibly print uh, libraries or some other community spaces? Well, they have the ability to print it. Um, my understanding is that we will not be uh, provide no, we won't be creating a Spanish translation of it. And after the city's already gone through this whole translation process, and I think we, the city staff probably there's somebody that can translate it. To do that, so that'd be, I, the farm, Richards. It'd be nice. I mean, it's, just, it's where the city seems to be going. And I don't know what the plans are for the other areas that are having planning teams. But I'll, I'll talk with our team about it, um, but it's, I don't think it's something that I'm in a position to say that, that we could do just for Midtown, for example. So we have to think about going to the next one. for all the right? yeah. 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 But who would we address that with? Should be some comment too. Um, well, there's something we could look into there was a, we have translated one particular document that was done a few years ago. Um, it did cost a few thousand dollars, so we're looking at actually 30 plants, so we have to look at that in the budget to see. Or are there particular sections that we would maybe need executive summary, because some of it may be a lot of maybe technical, but that's something we really need. You can ask me to comment on that going forward and the RFPs for anything that we do that's community based like this, and we just simply put that into the scope of work um, in a community like ours. I think it would be just common sense for us to continue to do that. So I would like to make sure that that's noted. Okay. And I would say that also that uh, there was a the community meeting number three to make sure, I mean, since now it's really getting to the end, that uh, we have two different moments at least, one that might be a Monday through Thursday after 6 o'clock and one that's a weekend on a Saturday at 10 in the morning somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because people work and I, I haven't been impressed by the numbers of people showing up for those community needs. Okay, I'll see what I can do about that. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to. Again, if the rest of our other plans are having two of them, um, it's, uh, it's most of our department that works each one of them. Um, but uh, it's valuable to understand, you know, a weekday evening and a Saturday morning and get more people to participate, potentially. Um, we'll also be trying to um, provide other opportunities besides the community. More than trying that, I can say we will be doing it. The city, the city had $31 million surplus after six months. I think there's some money that we can set aside. And I know that this councilman that you would probably be supportive of this. Great. Okay. Um, so the next thing that um, I was hoping we could move on to is the neighborhood profile priorities. And so this is a section of the plan um, that uh, summarizes some of the unique and local uh, existing conditions and, and primary issues for each neighborhood. Um, and also some of the highest priorities for things that should be done in the future. And I'm going to tell you for just a moment about what we've been doing to create these. And then, um, as I indicated earlier, which is, uh, has some thoughts you'd like to share, and we have uh, at least several minutes to talk about this before we um, move on to other things. So, the neighborhood profile of priorities um, it's a way for us to try to integrate, again, the uniquely local issues uh, for each neighborhood into the Midtown plan. Throughout the rest of the plan, uh, the future land use map, um, the mobility and transportation section, um, the amenities and infrastructure section, there will also be uh, integration of some neighborhood priorities uh, and values. And that's certainly fundamental to what we're doing. It's trying to incorporate uh, neighborhood values throughout the plan. But this section was intended to be something that's, that's really uh, about primarily local issues um, that are really important to neighborhoods. Um, so we had it set up as uh, a chapter that offered a brief set of strengths, challenges, and opportunities. And then, again, a very brief uh, list of priorities. And over the last couple of months, I've visited with uh, each of the Neighborhood Association general meetings in Midtown to talk about um, 
what kind of content they'd like to put into this section of the plan. A lot of the things that I hear are also useful for incorporating into other sections of the plan, and so it's been really helpful to make the rest of the plan better as well. Um, and um, we started that process out by making an initial draft because we'd heard at community meeting number one, community meeting number two, and other neighborhood visits in the last year, some of the, the relevant issues and priorities. So we, we just created an initial draft to discuss. We visited the neighborhoods, um, we've revised the draft, and um, we're, we're now going to be doing some more work to continue improving them. Um, and um, with that being said, um, it's just a little bit of background information on some of those things. And I think that what you wanted to speak with us about, which is related, um, but not necessarily fundamentally about this chapter either. So mm -hmm. I'll open it up to you. I know I have enough copies for all the guests, but I do need to have copies for the people at the table. What I'm going to be talking about is the comprehensive plan, because it's more or less the driver for what we're here for San Francisco tomorrow. It's one leg of the three stools for the different plans, the quarter plan, the sustainability, and the comprehensive plan. And so what I've done in this sheet, uh, you're a good teacher, I'm not going to read <laughs> you. You can read, but I'll just highlight what I was trying to do. Uh, and that is show where in the comprehensive plan uh, it discusses neighborhood plans. And I used search engines so that that was the only word I was looking for, neighborhood plans. The two words had to be there, not neighborhood, because you'll find neighborhood uh, throughout the plan. It's, there's always a discussion about the neighborhood. Uh, Mayor Nuremberg really did a good job of setting the uh, framework for that. The first one, uh, 1.3, goes to the sections, uh, gives you a sort of an overview in that it's the umbrella uh, comprehensive plan is the umbrella policy for the planning document itself. And it does not alter or negate the existing uh, neighborhood plans, community plans, or sector plans that may already exist. And that was a true statement for all of the long-range planning that's been done in the past, whether it was A397 uh, 2001. Um, and uh, specifics there, I was trying to give you uh, where it talks about historic neighborhoods. And number 17.2 uh, gives us some uh, things to think about, particularly as we look at the priorities um, and the snapshot uh, of our uh, priorities and uh, opportunities for us that the subarea plans in particular should utilize existing neighborhood plans as the foundation document and then use that foundation document to develop the uh, help develop our neighborhood plan, uh, snapshots. The uh, land use and uh, land use document that we'll eventually be saying was did take uh, because it was to use the land use plans and the neighborhood plans uh, as a starting point and going from there, and that's when if I'm reading the city correctly, they found variances all over the place, uh, neighborhood plans and land use, and how they're uh, trying to pull those together. While the city's major transportation corridors often serve as the boundaries between the neighborhoods, uh, planning changes along the corridors have often not been incorporated. But looking, for example, at the main park plan, you would see that there was a concern on our part, and it was for the buildings along Broadway, the businesses, and making sure that they were sustainable, and that we didn't have what we have right now, which are too many vacancies, because the vacancies in buildings that are cavernous uh, lead to many other kinds of problems. And the, the concluding one there, 1713, brings it back to the picture that eventually when the city does the overall plan, you're going to have to incorporate the neighborhood plans in order to 
give the services out to that should be done uh, for us. But it was a reminder to me and to, to all of us. It gave me a chance to read more of the comprehensive plan than I had in the past doing this search because I had to read through it to see what we're talking about. And I think that uh, what we find is that neighborhood plans are important. And they're important, and it's, it's stated uh, over and over again in these building blocks yeah, that form the foundation for the San Antonio Tomorrow Plan. That's my take on it. After all, I said two weekends ago, too. Go look at go Google it, you can find Nowcast we talked about uh, planning uh, and uh, San Antonio Tomorrow. Yeah, the last neighborhood association meeting, we actually spent most of the time speaking about this instead of the the, the plan. And it was I think it was probably informative for most people there. And that was a good meeting because there's so many people that turned up for it. It's a good idea to move to a new location. We're meeting in Manatee Park now, not in Lions Field, which is someplace else <laughs> outside the borders. So good meeting. So so based on that conversation in Nike Park and um, some others that we've had, um, I think in other planning areas. Um, we'd like to expand the neighborhood priorities and profile section. I just suggested that it was about two pages long, which is quite short. And so we'd like to open it up, uh, try to incorporate more content uh, from neighborhood plans if people in the neighborhood consider that content useful uh, or modify it. Um, and um, we're also uh, we'd also like to go and meet with some of the original neighborhood planning team members that uh, that formed those plans. And that's going to be difficult to find many of them. We didn't keep complete a best list. Uh, George is here from that. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, Mr. Hunt <laughs> is here, and, and and we know that if any are still involved in the neighborhood or maintain relationships, so I think that that might be more useful to right. address this. Several people on the board right now. So, so that's to say that we have more work to do on neighborhood profiles and priorities, and um, I think we appreciate the sort of the um, the extra emphasis that we need to make to incorporate. Um, or integrate uh, neighborhood plan priorities to the extent that neighborhoods still find them uh, really relevant and still find them to be priorities into other sections of the plan as well, uh, if they have that sort of uh, area-wide significance. You know, they, I think it would be important to recognize within the priorities or within the profile too when that already is, when safety is concerned. Or idea already exists in, for example, Manatee Park Plan. We talked about the plan in 201, we talked about walkability mm -hmm. in that plan. So it's a reaffirmation of what we're talking about today, also. And it's important to show that. And can you speak to that? So yeah, I I jump in really quickly. So yeah. one thing that you know, we've been hearing across the other five sub area plans, and this is not a unique. Um, Concern that we've heard, like in, in the Midtown area, we've been hearing it across all the plans. And I think Gary, the other clicker, um, started to show what we had in terms of kind of the draft layout of the document, which is common. One one thing that I think is a is a no brainer to get in here is we had opportunities to denote on these priorities where a priority from the neighborhood scale aligns really well with the sub area planning effort. Um, and then we also had uh, the ability to denote where maybe a neighborhood priority from Mankey Park, let's say, um, actually aligns really well with one of our many other neighborhoods in any of the six sub-area plans. And one thing we want to make sure we get in here now is also a way to denote that this is a priority that's being carried forward from the existing neighborhood plan and kind of being re-elevated through this process. So, Garrett talked about how you know, the, these sub-area planning efforts, the intention all along has been it really meaningfully integrate the neighborhood plans into these in a kind of a, um, a, a really distilled down document so it provides clear guidance to the city, to the private sector, and places that you know, the neighborhood really wants to see that investment. Um, but I think to Garrett's point of trying to make this more robust, we'd, we'd love to hear the kind of things that should be in this sort of standalone document. So the idea is that each neighborhood 
that at least is interested in willing to help us out um, within each sub-area would have its own document. A couple of the other things we've heard so far from some of the sub other sub-areas is that it would be great to have a place to memorialize the major accomplishments from the, the existing neighborhood plans. So a place to kind of celebrate the fact that you know, let's say Nicky Park, for example, the original plan uh, recommended conservation district, and that's in place. So it would be a great, it's a great time for us to kind of re reflect back on those existing plans and be able to say, you know what, this neighborhood plan really catalyzed this big idea. Let's make sure that we get it in this newer effort, and let's make sure that we're showing that demonstrated momentum. Um, but then also have a place to say, here are key recommendations that were in those plans, and and those that we want to make sure we prioritize kind of elevate to this next level. So we can get whether it's a half dozen, whether it's two dozen, you know, neighborhood priorities that we say, you know, for the next 15 year horizon that these sub area plans will help lead us towards, what are the priorities for each of the individual neighborhoods within these broader geographies? Did you share this, these priorities with us? And I just getting anything, whatever you shared with the neighborhood associations? No, we've just been working on it uh, individually with each neighborhood so far. And it's been in a very draft and rough form, and so we haven't brought the draft results to the planning team um, to review as, as a planning team. Yeah, because I feel what I need that information as we make any uh, future decisions, and I think that's the frustration I mean, the last meeting that I recall was the land use conversation, and we were very frustrated, you know, having received, you know, uh, these maps, and and I was concerned, like, how can I sit here representing the community? Do they agree with this? And I think I wasn't, I, I was in the law there were many of us. It was very a contentious meeting, and and it was <laughs> these priorities that would be like, how are we going to incorporate? what the neighborhood associations want mm -hmm. when, you know, you've already, someone has already defined, you know, these large-scale buildings and dense <coughs> buildings up and down Broadway or whatever it is, parts of a lot of the conversation that okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, and I'm glad we've had these meetings, but I also don't have a sense of what Tobin Hill said, what Mandy Park, you know, all the different community groups said, and it would be good to even get those comments you know, to us as well, so we're reading because we weren't at those meetings. And I, I'd like to add, or just address that, because the land use portion of it for each of the sub-area plans, the land use that was adopted in the neighborhood plan is the foundation for that land use for the sub-area. So we have taken that into account. So the land use that you're seeing or you've looked at is, is you can think of it as an equation. So it's the land use from the adopted plans, Plus, if, there, if there's an area that has no adopted land, we look at the zoning. And then we kind of add to that in our SA borders, and we look at land use along with the, um, the transit borders, and we add to that everything that we've heard from the planning team plus what we heard from the community. So the land use piece does take into account and use the future land and use the adopted land use map from the adopted neighborhood plans. I think with this new, um, with this effort to really expand that, what will happen in terms of our timeline is, as Garrett mentioned, we're going to be talking to the old planning teams in terms of this is kind of the draft that we have to the, the priorities. Let's pull more from the adopted neighborhood plans. Um, we'll take that also out to the community. You'll have a chance to look at that. But then that will come back to the, the planning team again. So you'll have a chance to look at that all again in terms of how everything is built on itself in terms of the land use plus everything that you said, plus input from the neighborhood, the old planning team, the old planning team members to get to the final product. So in a sense, it's like we're doing a quilt in a sense, um, kind of taking all those plans and kind of piecing them together for the sub-area, and then each sub-area we put that together to create the entire city. So everything will, it's more or less a circle. We always bring it back to you, but it's, it's kind of a work in progress. So each piece builds on itself, and we have to bed it with you and the community. So it may take a little bit of time, but we kind of have to go through this process, or we're out of the process to incorporate more of the neighborhood plan use of it. 
It's yeah. incremental, and then we have to get some feedback, and we'll come back so you can see it all come together. And again, we're going to take more time to start looking uh, yeah, and, and you started with the quote thing, uh, and I'll do so. I'll say that we, we want to check the students. <laughs> um, we want to see, and, and I think it would be fruitful uh, for, for the city that we have that document, we, this, this group of people, and then come back and have a discussion because we would play off of each other and we have that interaction that is so important when you're trying to come to a final product. And then, just to jump, I guess to continue on the quilting analogy, I feel like um, Gary was walking us through kind of the schedule and the, where we've gotten to date. And really, at this point, with a geography this big for this whole Midtown plan area, we basically like picked out the patches of fabric in the really big moves. We picked out what the size of this thing is going to be, and then the neighborhood profile priority piece truly is that the stitching part of things and making sure that these complement each other. So. The land use conversation is always, it's a tough one in the name planning process to kind of wrap your head around because you're, you're talking about really big moves and you're talking about huge visions that are 15, 20 years down the line and that's hard for all of us to conceive. Um, and now that we've kind of got some of those pieces in place, now it's about looking at that through a finer lens and saying, does this work for Mickey Park? Does this piece work for Tobin Hill? Are these talking to each other or not? And that's the kind of feedback we, we need the planning team but then also the public to be to be really candid about and let us know if, if we're steering the wrong direction to help, help get us back on course. <clears throat> so, uh, since we've been on uh, like, a um, uh, quilt. I like the quilt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, when you bring in land, uh, land use, you're talking about the oldest piece of material that's been Absolutely. handed down. Yep. Been handed down. It's the homestead. We have to be aware of that at all costs. Absolutely. And so again, because um, we didn't think, I'd like to read any comments from community. They're around here. I have been getting calls or just reading the paper or whatever, and there's a lot of frustration. And again, the last meeting it was from the Neighborhood Association reps to the Witty and San Antonio River Authority folks, like, scared at what they saw in Grand Land News. And they were the folks that said we were there. 20 years ago, sorry. <laughs> um, when you know they hope to envision that, and now they're saying it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. And that was, you know, so from people who are usually not recognized and respected, at, you know, on some level, to institution stakeholders that are very much respected, feeling the same way. It was very and, uh, scary to see that, and I, I want to honor my presence here and I want to honor the people around the circle and the larger community or, or I don't want to be a part of it and that I don't want my name associated with it if, if the community is very angry at the end of this process. So, um, so we will certainly share the initial draft neighborhood profiles and priorities uh, with the planning team and um, we would like to do that with the rest of the draft plan as a whole. Um, you can see how the draft comes together and the different parts complement each other. And, um, and then continue to have opportunities to change it and improve it after that. Um, and in the meantime, um, we'll go further and, and ask you to continue, for example, tonight, weighing in on some questions that we have for the Midtown plan. Um, and they primarily relate to um, things that we talked about at planning team meeting number seven in February. So some some responses that we have, some potential ways that we can respond to, to that conversation and what we talked about then. Um, and also, um, you know, preview some questions that we'll be working on uh, as a planning team and with Mankey Park neighborhood related to the land use plan. Uh, the land use map in Nike Park. Um, and um, so, with that being said, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about related to the neighborhood plans before we continue trying to make some progress? Nothing, George. So, 
at all of the plan at all of the planning team meetings, we've um, we've asked that the comments and discussion be limited to the planning team members. Um, and it's designed as a work session to get uh, to get some work done as the planning team. And if we if we do invite comments uh, from from anyone um, and part of the guests, then it would probably only be fair to have an open discussion with everybody. And that's not that's not what we the expectations that we've set for the planning team in the past. Um, and so I'm going to um, ask that we do continue limiting planning team meeting discussions to the planning team. With that being said, um, I know based on our prior discussions that we have lots to learn um, from you, sir, and uh, probably from everyone else in this room. And I'm looking forward to uh, more conversations with our guests from Government Hill um, and Mankey Park and every other neighborhood. Uh, and I, as before, have been available to visit uh, neighborhood board meetings, any community meeting, even if it's not a neighborhood, um, or a neighborhood association general meeting. So please ask me to come uh, visit. Um, and I'll continue providing neighborhoods as well to, to please have me come visit. Um, so I'm sorry if, we, if I fight anyone to speak, but it's, a, it's an open discussion for everyone. So, um, Possibility. I wonder if we could just give cards to those folks to ask them to write down their questions, their comments, their concerns, the contact information to give back to you and the staff so that you can ensure that there'll be some response to follow up. Is that reasonable? Rudy, can you please help me get the comment cards off of the table in the hallway? Sure. And so, um, I don't want to reduce your concern. If you took the time to come here, you probably have more to say than. Um, can be expressed on a comment card. It's probably more nuanced or, or complex. So I hope that you, if you do write some comment uh, or at least leave your contact information in the neighborhood that you're from, um, and we'll make sure that you know the next time we're visiting your neighborhood. Um, and I'll also, uh, my business cards are also on the table outside. And, um, and you're welcome, anyone is welcome, and encouraged to contact me. And sign a telephone or email. I could also visit with small groups of neighbors. So it doesn't have to be some kind of official group. So, um, so far I haven't been overwhelmed with requests to do this, but I continue to try to offer that opportunity. Sure. I have them all stacked here at the end of the Okay. Um, so the comment cards are stacked at the end of the table. Polly, would you pass, pass them around? Please, or just pass the staff in case I, anyone wants to take one. I will, and Thank while you. I'm doing so, I would like to encourage the committee members to decide whether or not they want to hear from the representatives in this room and not leave the decision up to Garrett. This is y'all's committee. No, and I, I want to say that I've been trying to state some of that, and so I just don't want to be on these person, so I hope my guess will tell my other suggestion is if you have questions you want to write and give it to us, we can ask the question that way. I can't make comments though because I don't know what y'all are thinking, but you know, I don't know if there's anybody else that wants to. We could also share comments that come from the cards with the next, with the planning team, um, via email at the next planning team meeting as well. Um, Gary, if I might make a suggestion. I'm sorry, it's. It applies to city staff as well. It's, it's something we have. It's something we've been consistent about I, I since the beginning of the process. We're spending more time talking about comments than we're on it. So, at the Mayor's Housing Task Force, the policy is exactly the same as at the end. People can go around and make comments. It's just a suggestion, and we do it for almost every other task force that the city puts forward. It seems very simple here as well. But I'll leave that to you and Bridget for today. Okay, so we have until the meeting is supposed to end at 8 30. And we probably have a full discussion for the next hour and 15 minutes. And as always, I stay until the last person leaves after the meeting. 
Um, but we did invite the planning team to come here with the expectation that we discuss the things that we said we would. And so um, I'm going to move on to the next part of the presentation and the discussion. I would support moving this quickly, to, not with that with deliberately, but as quickly to the agenda as we can, and hopefully we might have time at the end before we turn. And perhaps that would work. I second that. I would like to try to do that. With the understanding that Dan may not have it. Well, again, I'd like to follow the city process as well. I want to hear from the community, and I wasn't at those meetings, and, and again, we don't have notes of those meetings, so it's very frustrating to then, you know, again, just make decisions without having heard those comments. Okay, thank you for sharing. Eric, just for clarification, Marcella, are you talking about the meetings that you're having with the individual neighborhood association? Yeah, but again, we're, we're just moving forward and, yeah, even those priority conversations or, or whatever it is, that they're here. Obviously, they're here in large numbers and they've been at any of the other meetings that we've had, so there are concerns going and you know, people are frustrated about the process and so the fact that Nike Park and Government Hill and I'm not sure what other neighborhood associations are here might be based on his visits with them and their concerns, so no, I, we don't know what those are. And we don't know what those are. So we're being asked to give recommendations and review <coughs> without the benefit of that information. So I think that's something that several of us are a little concerned about. We also have a representative from each neighborhood association who was at each of those meetings. Um, and that's why, they, that's why they have a place on the planning team. Well, I understand that that's one of my responsibilities being here. Mm. So. All right. So at the last meeting at the Lady Museum, we talked about the future land use map primarily in relation to the Broadway corridor. And we also talked a little bit about Nike Park neighborhood areas. So at the prior meeting, we had had a fair amount of discussion about other parts of Midtown, and we, we had left uh, this discussion for planning team meeting number seven. So we had, um, in, in the initial draft land use map, we had identified a good portion of Nike Park neighborhood south of the park as, uh, as high density mixed use to match uh, the existing zoning. Um, and we heard that that was inappropriate um, from uh, Butch Hayes. Um, there was also concern about it from the neighborhood uh, meetings that I attended at Mickey Park. Um, and um, there was really, we were really encouraged to, to lower the recommended densities uh, for the land use map in Mickey Park. And so um, we had done that at least initially, and um, we've essentially matched large portions of Maggie Park. This is really for discussion purposes, and it's really for a discussion that goes beyond tonight with the neighborhood. I'll be asking you to give us your blessing on this, uh, and, and it be being done with that. But trying to match some of the existing density, sort of a low, low urban low density residential, um, which describes uh, single family homes, uh, duplexes, uh, and um, potentially triplexes. Um, if the zoning already supports it. Uh, so it's the same in some of these areas south of the park as in the northern portion of Mankey Park. And leaving some opportunities for a little bit more density in the middle here, but really nothing more than the existing zoning would support, which would typically be when you combine it with the design standards, um, uh, single family homes to duplex, triplex type opportunities. Um, and the overall pattern of lower versus higher versus higher density does mirror the neighborhood plan. And so more than anything, I wanted to show you that we're trying to be responsive to some of the concerns that we had. Um, we didn't have similar concerns in, um, in other neighborhoods um, on, a, on a widespread basis. So 
that's why we're calling out Mickey Park. There has been more discussion about it. Um, and there's more work to do on this, undoubtedly. I'm sure we'll get more comments on it. So, throughout other residential neighborhood areas and, and planning team meetings and neighborhood visits, we talked about in the neighborhood residential areas essentially encouraging uh, a policy where zoning to have more density in the future would be discouraged and downzoning would be discouraged too. So essentially like the existing rules in neighborhoods should mostly stay the same to promote some stability and also some moderate opportunities for growth. And that seemed like something that for the most part there was some acceptance of and um, we, didn't, we didn't get messages to, to the contrary when we visited uh, the neighborhood associations in the last couple of months. Except that, um, again, in Manhattan Park, there's, there are some concerns about that. And there is an interest stemming from the 2003 neighborhood plan in changing the zoning to, to just match the existing, uh, the existing density levels. So if the, if the rules now allow a fiveplex, but you could only, but there's just a duplex there right now. The neighborhood plan would have recommended changing changing those rules just just a duplex from now on. You know, you couldn't. So so that's different than the direction that we're headed in with the other neighborhood residential areas. And so it's something for us to discuss with the neighborhood and with the planning team going forward. Um, is whether we take an approach with the future land use map and text policy recommendations that are more aligned with other midtown neighborhoods or following the neighborhood plan or there's also some other potential um, recommendations we can make to encourage specific types of housing but not just any kind. Uh, for example, if affordable housing is a priority um, or housing that's accessible to people with disabilities with a ramp and a lot of hallway. There's ways to potentially incentivize that. Uh, through future uh, zoning uh, processes. So um, this is something for us to, to consider and I think have more conversations with um, with uh, residents in Mankey Park about uh, the Mankey Park Neighborhood Association Board. And, and I think that the discussion about affordability was also part of Wes's visit to that even if it's just because a neighborhood wants it and another one doesn't, that for us in the city, being the most economically segregated city, that even in those 20 story high, you know, uh, market rate housing development, that we also want to make sure the working class people that are working in and around it can also so how do we support that. Certainly. Yeah, and when it comes to the values that were seen to be expressed in the Midtown Vision and Goals that we worked on last fall. Uh, in the Citywide Essay Tomorrow, the Comprehensive Plan, um, you know, discouraging affordable housing or a certain type of person, like a renter, doesn't seem so consistent with those. Um, but there's sort of, there's different variations to the extent that we can really proactively encourage certain types of housing. So that's... Third board meeting, we did talk about affordability, possible section eight, depending on which area needed a little more density. So that's coming up. Okay. In the last town uh, tourist 30 bond meeting, right? And all the housing conversations that are going on, and we're going to those meetings as well. So, yeah, so how do we work together? Okay. Um, does anyone have any thoughts, Butch, or anyone? We don't have to make a bunch of progress on this conversation. I think more, more neighborhood conversations we'd like to before moving forward. But do you have any? I, uh, I can't see what street it is down there in the box. Got a very dark box in the <clears throat> Is that Westport or is that us? Yes, yeah, so this, uh, this would be, um, gosh, I believe it's Ira. Um, and like the GCM is over here. Yeah. So I reckon a street that is next to some higher density apartments and some on the south, which is right. reflected more or less in this pattern. 
And on the north side of Iowa, uh, more of a single family or duplex that we have in the, the fine traditional urban grain. Yeah. So uh, let's discuss further in the coming weeks and months.